What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Adidas X 17.2 in the launch Dust Storm Pack colorway. So this is the first takedown model in the new X 17 lineup. Above it, you of course have the $300 X 17 plus pure speed, then the X 17.1, which retails for 200 bucks, and then the 17.2, which is what I'm holding right here, with a $130 retail price. So it's $70 less than the X17.1, which I guess is the main shoe you would compare this to. Compares much better to the point one rather than the plus variation in the X line. Anyways, what's really interesting about this shoe is while it's a takedown, it features an upper that I actually like more than the top end X17.1. And I actually have some theories in regards to why this upper is as good as it is. So if you wanna learn more about this shoe in general and hear my theory, stick around, watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen as well as the first link down below in the description. Click that and it'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $130 retail price. Now, of course, it's a takedown model. So unlike the high-end ones, they do not come with any extras. All you get in the box are the shoes themselves. So X17.2, obviously with any takedown model, the price point is very, very important because most people who are gonna be considering these are on a tighter budget and they wanna spend X amount of money on a pair of shoes and obviously get the best possible product for their money. Is a takedown model always the best way of getting that best possible quality? No, not necessarily. You can usually get a top end model uh, that's been marked down, be it a previous generation or a previous, uh, an older colorway at around $130, $140. But with the X17.2, what's interesting about this shoe is the upper because it is technically different than what we got from the previous generation X16.2 and it's different from the current generation X17.1 even though the tech specs will list it as being something very very similar and Adidas doesn't do a great job of tech specs in general especially with the X16 and X17 generations it's kind of been a little bit of a mess and a little bit confusing anyways what's cool about this is you'll notice that it looks to be very similar in terms of its overall material, but the base is actually this kind of neoprene type material that has these kind of embossed dots running all the way throughout. And that's the base material for the entire upper. You then have your polyurethane layer on top and a liner on the inside. And the end result is a material that is super, super soft. This feels so much better than the upper on the X17.1, even though it's technically listed as the exact same tech fit material. Why is that? I don't really have an answer to that question. Again, it's kind of just a marketing mistake on Adidas' part, which I'm not sure how this happens when you only have a couple models in the line, but this is definitely different than what you'll get from the 17.3, the 17.1, or the 17 plus as part of the X line. So. What's my theory in regards to this upper? If you guys remember when Adidas launched the Ace 17 Plus Pure Control, the original Red Limit Pack colorway, it featured a full prime knit upper. And then in the very shortly after second colorway release, we actually got the real variation of the Ace 17 Plus Pure Control for pretty much every colorway after that, actually for every colorway after that. So what I think might be happening here is that the first colorway of the X17.1 and possibly the Pure Speed as well, actually features the upper that we're not gonna get for future colorways. I don't know this for sure, but I would not be surprised at all if the next colorway of the X17.1 had an upper like this versus what we have on the current X17.1 in the Dust Storm Pack color, which is a material that's very, very similar to that of the X16.1. So that's my theory. If it doesn't happen, then hey, I think I like the upper more on the X17.2 versus the X17.1, but again, just a theory. Curious to see what's gonna happen with future colorway releases. So this material, like I said, it feels super soft. It's very, very flexible. It still has that kind of clumsy seam right here on the medial side of the forefoot which I'm still not crazy about. I can't believe that they couldn't work out a different place to put that seam rather than an area of your foot that you use so constantly on the ball. Uh, but you're also gonna notice that this shoe does have non-stop grip listed as a tech spec feature like you'll find on the X17.1, but also like the X17.1, it does not have non-stop grip dots. Instead, what you're gonna find is 
these little squares, almost like in a checker pattern with a very slight kind of micro texturing to it. It has a little bit of a grittiness to the surface of the upper. So perhaps that's the nonstop grip element. Although historically, like I said, nonstop grip has been the very clearly visible dots running throughout the entire upper, like you'll find on other top end models from Adidas. So again, nonstop grip branding, not 100% sure if you're actually getting nonstop grip here. The finish on the surface though, it's got that little bit of grippiness to it, which I kind of like, but it's not a sticky, kind of rubber grip, it's just a gritty uh, uh, grip, kind of like a, like a very, very fine sandpaper, if that makes any sense. Difficult to describe, but very, very, I guess, easy to understand once you hold the shoe in your hand. And also because you have the little bit of texturing to the neoprene base, the upper itself does appear to have a little bit of a texturing to it as well. It's not completely flat. That's not something that's really noticeable on the ball, but you will notice it when you hold the shoe in your hands. As far as the rest of the upper is concerned, you're gonna find that you have the exact same lacing system that you'll find with the X17.1. You have the nylon straps that basically just act as lace holders uh, or place holders for the lacing system. They're not actual straps that go all the way through the upper. Anyways, lacing system running through the middle on what is technically a one piece design. You can see they leave that neoprene material exposed closer to the top, which is not bad. I consider this to be a low cut shoe. You might consider it to be mid cut, but for me, feels completely low cut. It does have the S curve heel design as well, which is kind of a signature characteristic of the X16 and now X17 generation. The internal heel liner is a smooth synthetic suede material, good amount of padding, good heel lockdown as well. Really, really nice, happy with that. And then you're also gonna find that the insole is fully removable. I'll pull that out for you guys which is good to see because sometimes we don't see a removable insole at this price point from Adidas. We do have it though with the X17.2. It's got the mesh liner on top, obviously the X branding right there at the heel, single layer of foam, nothing too fancy there at all. Pretty much the standard comfort insole you would get with the high end X17.1. So that's nice to see on the takedown model. Moving on to the heel counter and the sole plate, the heel counter, instead of being external, like you'll find uh, as part of the sprint frame on the higher end boots in the line. It's fully internal on this particular shoe. And then the sole plate is technically not a sprint frame here. It's just a standard TPU plastic material and it has the same general look. It doesn't look cheap by any means, but it's significantly stiffer and significantly heavier, which you'll see in just a second when we weigh the shoes. So you have good flexibility in the forefoot area, but basically from the middle of the forefoot back, the shoe is extremely rigid. And that's something that you will notice when you put the shoes on your feet. They don't have that necessarily the same natural sensation out of the box in comparison to the higher end models, be it the 17.1, or the pure speed, which is a bit of a bummer, but kind of expected with Adidas takedown models. But one of those quirks that I just don't see why it has to be there. There's no reason why this sole plate should be dramatically stiffer than the higher end boot, given that it's such a similar design to the actual construction of the sole plate. And then of course you do get their FGAG stud pattern that is consistent across the entire line, be it high end or low end. Uh, Consistent across the entire Adidas brand for that matter in terms of the overall layout. It works well, not overly aggressive, not overly clingy by any means, gets the job done. And if you've worn an Adidas shoe in the last several years, you kind of know what to expect here. Now, in terms of weight, in a size 9 US, and this is a huge difference in comparison to the X17.1, these guys weigh in at 9.4 ounces. So where the X17.1 is gonna be in the mid seven ounce range, these weigh significantly more, about one and a half to two ounces more, which is noticeable on your feet, not only because of the weight, but also because of the differences with the upper, as well as the stiffness of the sole plate. I really, really like the upper, but it is kind of, the quality of the upper is kind of, I guess, deflated a little bit because of the stiffness of the shoe and the overall weight, which I think for a lot of people looking for this style of shoe, they want something that is on the lighter side. So if that's what you're looking for in a pair of boots, especially at the takedown price point of $130, this probably isn't gonna be the best option for you, but if you don't mind a slightly sturdier, stiffer, kind of, I don't wanna say heavy, but not a lightweight feel from your shoes, you likely won't mind the feel of the X17.2. In terms of the overall look of the shoe, it looks a lot like the high-end boot, does not look cheap at all. Like I said, the quality of the upper could be one that you'd find on a top-end model, uh, so there's nothing really to complain about there. The lack of heel counter I don't think looks bad and, and the overall sole plate looks pretty clean as well. And of course the launch dust storm pack color with the little dots running throughout the white base. So you have black dots on a white upper. It's not perforations by the way. Uh, 
I think it looks pretty cool. I have no issues with it. You have this teal color and the Adidas branding as well as the X branding and then your tech spec section of the shoe right here on the back, the light gray in the neoprene through the heel area of the shoe and then the translucent sole plate. I think they look pretty good, honestly. No complaints for me on this particular shoe in the looks department. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. That's enough about tech specs though. Let's take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet. So you can see on the right shoe, I actually swapped out the stock white laces for some white and black speckled SR4U replacement laces, which pretty much match perfectly with the white and black dots you're gonna find on the upper. Anyways, if you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. So I'm just gonna tie these up really quickly. Uh, a lot of people with this particular shoe, because some professional players have worn the X17.1 and the X16.1 without the laces. They ask whether or not you need to wear the laces with a shoe like this because it is a one-piece enclosure. General recommendation is that if the shoe comes with laces and it has a lacing system as part of the design, there's likely a reason why they incorporated those laces because it's very important to get proper lockdown. So if your shoes have laces, I would personally recommend wearing them with laces in order to get the best lockdown and general performance from your shoes, as well as maintaining a good comfortable fit. If your foot's sliding around on the inside of the shoe because you don't have laces to hold your foot in place, generally not a good idea, but if you wanna try it, go for it. I just don't think it's a great thing to do. Anyways, let me just tie up the other shoe and we'll get a look at both of them on feet. And here is a look at the X17.2 on feet. So my one complaint with this shoe when I did put them on, I guess aside from the stiffness of the sole plate, which just feels kind of unnecessary, is the fit in the heel. And this is a very common flaw with a lot of Adidas takedown models for whatever reason. It's the fit in the heel. It's just, it's shallow. It's really, really unusual. Your heel does not sit deep enough inside of the shoe. Not to the point where your heel is not flying out or it's got heel slippage issues, but it's just awkward in terms of how it fits around your heel. And like I said, you're higher up in the heel area than you would expect to be based on how the higher end model fits. If you put this on next to the high end model, I can guarantee you that 10 out of 10 people are gonna be more happy with the fit of that X17.1 versus the X17.2, which kind of sounds the way that it should be, but again, there's no reason why this shoe can't fit well or at least fit properly in terms of the depth in the heel, be it a top end model, be it a low end model, whatever you're comparing it to, the shoe should fit well. That's kind of part of the, I guess one of the most important aspects of any kind of soccer shoe. So for me, that's my one complaint here. The rest of the boot though fits really nice. This upper feels so soft, it feels nice and flexible. I really, really like this material more so than what you're gonna find on the X17.1, which is really nice. Um, the fit in the width, as far as that is concerned, it's got a tighter fit overall. So I guess if you have really, really wide feet, not the best option for you. They're definitely not mercurial tight though. So if you think that these are gonna be comparable to something like a Veloce 3 as an example, they're not, it's something entirely different. Again, as long as you don't have super wide feet, I think these will fit you quite comfortably. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here. And the fit the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So that is pretty much it guys for my review of the Adidas X17.2. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below the normal $130 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.